the name Jace Taste the Science Ace when we started this a couple of months ago, right? And then one of our awesome viewers created a theme song for Jonathan. Listen. S-C-I-E-N-C, DJ Stace in the morning on QC. S-C-I-E-N-C, DJ Stace in the morning on QC. Well, parents, get ready. I hope the kids are on standby because it is time to turn your backyard into a science lab. We're making a soda geyser today. CO2, you've likely heard of it in your science class. It's a compound and it's everywhere. Carbon dioxide is in the air we breathe and it's even in the sodas we drink. And it gets inside of bottles just like this through a process called carbonation. Well, that process is a quick process and it packs thousands of carbon dioxide particles right in the center of this drink. Well, they're all wrestling to get out. They want to get out pretty quick, but they can only get out once you turn this cap and release them. Oftentimes that happens with a short sprint sound and a lot of fizzing bubbles, but that process can be sped up. So that leads us to our vocabulary word for this Friday. Here's your science vocabulary word of the day, nucleation. What is nucleation? Nucleation is the process where droplets of liquid can condense from a vapor or bubbles of gas can form from a warm liquid. Okay, so I got to thinking and there is a timeless experiment out here that shows us the process of nucleation very well. But first, you need nucleation science. Perhaps Mentos candy provide that. Look here. You can see these Mentos candy. What you can't see with the neck and eye are thousands of small little nucleation sites. What happens is carbon dioxide is attracted to the sites in the gelatin and in the gum inside of this Mentos candy. And when they come in contact with CO2, you may have somewhat of a explosion or a soda geyser. We're gonna put it all in use here. Let's get our ingredients together. First, we have Diet Coke, a two liter Diet Coke, a pack of Mentos, you only need about seven for one experiment, and you need some type of cylinder to enact the explosion. Wouldn't be bad to have a piece of paper, fold it up, circle it up, and put a little tape on it, and that will make you a nice little cylinder, if you can see that there, okay. Get started guys okay so we're going to take this off and you have to do this pretty quick you can't leave the bottle open too long so we're going to go ahead and open it up okay you heard the co2 it just released okay you got to get it open really quick put this on top and we're about to start explosion. okay we got seven okay two three four <laughs> oh gosh five six hurry seven. hurry here seven is the prime number oh, okay here we, go. here we go guys <gasps> Whoa! Oh, wow. I'm glad you did that outside. All right. <laughs> That's our soda geyser for today, guys. Check it out. I love that. <laughs> There's a mess it? on the ground. Wait, did all of all it spray this out? But that's what happens when you mix, <laughs> that's what happens when you mix Mentos and Diet Coke together. A question that you may be asking, do you need Diet Coke to do it? Well, Diet Coke just happens to work best because the high amounts of aspartame and uh, potassium that are found in Diet Coke. So I have uh, off brand here and I have the real stuff here. It, Either one will work just fine and it will create a mess. So make sure you do it in the backyard. Hey, boys and girls, I have a really cool science experiment for you today. We're making ivory foam soap. Come here. Here's what you'll need. You'll need a bar of ivory soap, a knife, a paper plate and a microwave. Well, what is going on here? Well, ivory soap is a special kind of soap. It actually is filled with thousands of air particles inside of it. Unlike the soap that you use every day. Yep. When you put a regular bar of soap in here, it just sinks to the bottom of water. However, ivory soap, a bar of ivory soap, it floats. Ivory soap is known as the soap that floats because of those air particles that are trapped inside. We're going to turn those air particles into foam. So take your microwave here, maybe slice your ivory bar of soap up into four parts, put it in here, and we're going to set our timer to 90 seconds. 
Hey guys, only 15 more seconds to go and look what is happening inside of this microwave here. Wow, it looks like we have some ivory foam soap here. It is growing by the second. There is those air particles that were trapped inside of the bar, now encountering some heat and yes, blowing up and it's a little hot there, so be careful when you take it out. But look what you have, foam soap, and it does not have to go to waste. You can actually put this to use here. So that takes us to our science word of the day, foam, how is it created? Let's check it out here. Our science word of the day, you can see it right there on your screen. Foam, an object formed by trapping pockets of gas in a liquid or solid. And that's exactly what happened. We had a solid bar of soap here and we had small little gas particles trapped inside. We exposed it to some heat and look what you have, ivory foam soap. Enjoy and be careful. So I told you what you needed before the break. And I told you to get the salt, get a glass, get some water, get a string, and get a couple ice cubes, maybe about five or six to be exact. I want to go ahead and jump right into the experiment because it's going to take a minute for it to congeal at the end. Okay, so we're going to take our ice cubes here. I got one, got two, got three. I've already had my glass of water together, and I'm going to just do a little drop. I'm not going to make a huge mess, not a big splash, but... I'm gonna put my ice cubes in here, okay. Simple enough, right? It looks like you have a glass of regular ice water. Okay, so now we're going to drop our string inside and we're going to try to fish for some ice with the assistance of my finger. <laughs> okay, obviously it doesn't take a scientist to figure this out. Okay, that doesn't work. The ice is not going to come up on the string by just dipping it down in the water in the ice. Yeah, gravity's working against us on that. But if we add another element to it, we can change that all together. How about this? Let's take some salt. Okay, so I looked up this experiment and it recommended that you use maybe a tablespoon of salt. I'm gonna do a little bit more than that because I need this to go a little bit faster. But we're going to take our string and we're going to dip it back down in the water and from there okay we want it to touch a couple ice cubes we're going to begin our fishing experiment and what we're going to do today we're not fishing for fish but we're fishing for ice we're going to add in salt simple as that okay so okay you can tell i went a little bit over my one tablespoon. <laughs> okay, so let me explain while that is melting and refreezing what's going on here. Okay, so during the winter time, whenever we are fortunate enough to get temperatures that are cold enough to create frozen precipitation, we always talk about salting our driveways. And what salt does, whenever it comes in contact with frozen precipitation, it actually causes it to melt. What it does in essence, it lowers the freezing point of the water. So therefore it takes the water much longer when salt, when it comes in contact with salt to actually freeze. And that's where we get our science word of the day, the freezing point. It's a good word for you to know, especially during the months of December, January, and February. The freezing point is the temperature at which a liquid turns into a solid. So the freezing point of water, let's say it all together, because you know it at home, is 32 degrees. But when you add salt, you actually end up melting the water or the ice and it turns back into water, a liquid. But what happens in this experiment is the ice quickly melts when we put salt on, but because there's more ice than salt, it starts to freeze again. So the goal is for the string to stick to the frozen ice. And this oftentimes takes a minute, but I think mm. I have fish <gasps> with some ice. And I didn't lose any fish. Check it out here. Nice. Okay, and this is all the phenomenon. This is a phenomenon that, once again, that's recommended all throughout the winter time when you get frozen precipitation. Throw some ice out there. Mm -hmm. The reason why you put ice on the pavement, on the driveways, is to make sure that whatever frozen precipitation falls from the sky, that when it hits the ground, it melts before it has a chance to freeze again. And is it simplified in this? fishing ah, experiment. How cool. Is that a magic trick or a science <laughs> experiment? That's what most of his are, a combination uh, 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 of uh, Magic and science go hand in hand.